Hey, what's up? Will Dano here. One of the episodes I made recently showcased the setup that I used to record these tutorials, but in this video, I'm gonna continue the trend and show you my color correction process in Premiere for these tutorials. I use Adobe Premiere, but the techniques we're gonna cover today should apply the same to all other editing programs. So even if some of the settings may be named slightly differently, they'll most likely do the exact same thing. Now, before we go into Premiere, there's a few things that you can do while shooting to make sure that you get a much better color grade later when you're color grading. For example, one of the things that might be helpful would be to shoot in a higher bit rate. So if your camera allows to shoot, say 10 bit instead of 8 bit, that means that your color grade will look a lot better if you shoot 10 bit than it would if you shoot 8 bit. What I'm using right now is a Panasonic GH5. I'm shooting in 10 bit 422 internally and I'm doing that at 4K. But even if you don't have a GH5, just make sure that you record at the highest resolution and bit rate possible so that you can have a lot of flexibility when you're in post. Regardless of what bitrate you're shooting in, you should also be exposing your footage properly. If you're overexposed or underexposed, there's not going to be a way to recover that information later when you're grading. So make sure that you're exposing properly on your camera so that later when you're editing, you're doing the least amount of work necessary. Exposing well depends on the camera you have and the tools that it comes with. So for example, if you're using a waveform, personally I like that the most, making sure that most of your color information is somewhere in the middle, that gives you the most amount of flexibility for grading. If you don't have a waveform, you could use a histogram or you can even just rely on the exposure meter and that usually gets it in the right spot. You can also use zebras, false color, whatever your camera can offer to make sure that you're exposed. All right, without further ado, let's go inside of Premiere and I'll show you how I color correct these videos. Okay, so here I am in Premiere Pro. This is my synced project. So these are all the videos that I have synced to my audio. As you can see, it looks a little bit flat, but it's not too flat. I shot in a color profile that's not fully standard, but it's not log. On the GH5, it's called Cine D, and I believe on Sony cameras, there's Cine 4 and Cine 2. So I shot it in a picture profile like that so that I don't need to grade that much, but it still gives me a bit of room for flexibility. So I'm just gonna go to the color tab and I'm gonna get started. So first, what I like to do is I like to add a LUT. So I go to my creative tab into the lookup tables and I add my preferred LUT. You can obviously add whatever LUT you want. You can find free ones online or paid ones. However, regardless of where you get your LUTs from, usually they're way too strong. They just add too much vibrance to the image. So what I like to do is decrease the intensity to something around 60 or 70, depending on the video. Sometimes I only need to add in about 20%, but in this case, I think it looks best at around 75%. Now we're already mostly there. This is one of the great things about shooting with proper lighting is it gives you the ability to only with a few clicks make it look pretty decent. So right now with a LUT added at 75%, I'm gonna go into my basic corrections and do some more changes. I like to increase a little bit of the shadows just a tad so that I see more of my face, maybe 25. So if I show you the difference here, if I turn it back to zero, that's zero and that's 25. So it just kind of brings up the details in my face. I'll also increase the highlights a little bit just to give it some extra brightness and add in some overall contrast. Now the blacks are a little bit too crushed for me. Usually I like to bring this up by maybe one or two pixels. Let's do 1.5. And that's right where I like them. And also sometimes it helps just to get the white balance selector and just put it right on the wall since it's white. And usually that gives me a little bit of a correction, but it's not really a big deal because I white balance the shot properly in the camera anyway, so I don't have to play around with the temperature and tint too much. This is another reason why white balancing and exposing in camera is super good because you don't have to do much work in post. Now I can do more corrections that are a little more detailed. So personally, I don't like how orange and yellow this desk is in comparison to everything else. I think it's a little too distracting. So what I'm gonna do is instead of the basic corrections, I'm gonna go into the curves tab and we're not gonna use the RGB curves. We're gonna scroll down and use one or some of these menus. So to fix the orange, what I'm gonna do is I'll go to the hue versus saturation. Basically in this graph, you can select any color you want and then increase or decrease the saturation. Hence the name hue versus saturation. So basically you just take the color selector and I click on the desk and it automatically makes a small selection here 
of the actual color. What I like to do is increase the selection range so that when you change the colors, it doesn't affect everything in a really blocky pixelated way. So just increase the selection just a tad. Then I'll take the color that's in the middle, which is the orange desk color, and I'll just decrease it. And there you go. That makes it look a lot flatter, not as orange. If I turn this off, back on, it just makes it a lot easier to look at and it's just not super distracting. And then that's pretty much it from there. I just like to go and do some smaller tweaks. So right now I noticed that the shadows seem a little bit too high for my taste. So I'm just going to decrease that back down to maybe 10 and that looks a little bit better. So let's just check out the before and after. I think that works great. And that's it for me today. I hope that was helpful or entertaining in some way to you. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions maybe for other tutorials. Drop them down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.